So you're at home, enjoying your evening tea under a warm blanket, when all of a sudden you see a huge, no, enormous mosquito. Its long and gangly legs have a span of your palm, and it clumsily bumps into all the obstacles it meets. Despite its awkward appearance, it's still terrifying. What if it carries malaria? What if it eats you alive in your sleep? Slowly, not to draw the monster's attention to yourself, you get out from your soft chair and run for it into the bathroom, lock yourself in there, and open the browser on your phone. After a few seconds, you draw a ragged breath of relief. Turns out, it's just a crane fly, not a mosquito at all. It might look like a ferocious beast, but it's actually peaceful and even defenseless. Many crane flies don't even have mouths, so they don't eat at all. And those that have a mouthpiece will only munch on sweet flower nectar. Crane flies are really clumsy in the air. Their rather short wings are no match for their huge bodies and long legs. So they're slow, and it's easy to catch them. Birds and frogs, as well as bats and cats, love them as a treat. The only way they can avoid being eaten is by losing a limb. Their legs easily break off even when nothing touches them. And if you're still unconvinced not to scram and set your house on fire when you see one, consider this. Crane flies can tell you if the water pool you're about to swim in is of good quality. If you see these bugs on or above the water, you're good to go. Even more, fishers often make their bait look like the crane fly larva. Ah, this makes it more appetizing for the fish. But while googling, you get engrossed with reading up on some other weird and crazy bugs. For example, here's the human face stink bug. Nah, they don't really stink, at least for humans. They give off pheromones that attract other stink bugs, letting them know there's food nearby. The most peculiar feature of it is in the name. A man-faced stink bug has a face on its back, with three black dots drawn in red. The vibrant color of its back warns predators that the bug isn't tasty or even poisonous, while the black eyes draw attention from them to the vulnerable head. Saddleback caterpillar's name is also quite telling. It looks like some creature from another planet with a bright green saddle over its back. And the saddle is, sadly, the only safe part of the thing to touch. The spines you see all over the rest of its body are sharp and highly poisonous. If you want to give it a friendly tap on the back, make sure you don't touch anything else. Well, well, we have a titan beetle next. Meet the largest beetle in the whole world. It can grow as long as your entire palm, complete with fingers. Seeing one in the wild can be a shocking experience, especially if it flies right in your face. But don't fret. Thankfully, this giant is placid and won't bite you if you don't mean it harm. Still, if you make it angry, never let its mandibles touch you. The bug will hiss and bite, and what such snap can crack a pencil in half. What's interesting, an adult titan beetle doesn't feed at all. It doesn't need food to survive. As a larva, it gets enough energy to keep it well-nourished even when grown up. Ooh, I'd love that ability. An even more menacing-looking bug is a giant weeda. Living in New Zealand, these cricket-like creatures look like someone forgot to lock the portal to the infernal. A massive, beefy body with six thorny legs, long alien-looking antennae, and big mandibles that just might cut steel. Well, in fact, these giant insects are quite peaceful and won't bite unless provoked. And even if they do, it's not as bad as you might think. There are videos with weedas biting hands of people holding them and doing no harm at all. So don't let it scare you, even though such an insect might weigh more than a full-fledged sparrow. Atlas moths look like they have three heads, two of which are serpents. These pretty nocturnal flyers have strange shapes on the tips of their wings that look like snakeheads. This seems to be their mode of defense from predators. And that's also why they're sometimes called cobra moths. In Southeast Asia and India, where they normally dwell, atlas moths are often found on butterfly farms producing silk. And that's some sight. The wingspan of one such moth can reach 10 inches. That's larger than your hand. Peacock spiders are perhaps the cutest arachnids in the world, second maybe only to their jumping cousins. They're so tiny, you probably wouldn't even notice one scrambling through your kitchen. 
But if you get a chance to take a closer look, do it. Peacock spiders are beautiful. They have large beady eyes, a shiny blue and red coat, and cute fuzz on their body and legs. And their mating dance is something else entirely. Too bad they only live in Australia. Another moth on the list, the hummingbird moth. Remember the atlas one, how huge it was? Well, this one's as big as a hummingbird and holds much more resemblance to its namesake than that. The speed at which it flutters its wings, the long tongue to drink flower nectar, and even the sound it makes when flying, all of it makes you wonder if it's really a moth after all. Of course, the fuzzy critter is absolutely safe, and you should consider yourself lucky if you ever see one. Longhorned orb weaver spider is one of the most unusual arachnids in the world. It's just your regular spider in all respects, but for some reason, it boasts two long curved horns on its back. The back itself is bright orange to ward off predators. Red means danger. But scientists are still unsure why this spider needs those prongs. So there's a web of mystery for you. The soft rustling of leaves underneath, a pile of them slightly moving, and a big mighty horn shows up. It's the Hercules beetle one of the largest beetles on the planet. Almost half of its size comes from that horn on its head. Thanks to this wonderful appendage, you know exactly it's a male. Females don't have it at all. Yet the name comes not only from the horn, but from the amazing ability of this giant to haul extremely heavy loads. Its strength is second only to dung beetles. A Hercules can carry as much as 850 times its own weight. If you ever see a bug with five heads wearing a pointy cap, no, you're not on another planet. It's a Brazilian treehopper. Straight from a sci-fi movie and onto your screens here, this insect is a real mystery. It's small and secretive, and much is still unknown about it. No one knows why exactly the treehoppers have these fuzzy balls on their heads. But they've only got one head after all. <laughs> that much is certain. Going for a swim in a freshwater pond somewhere in the African tropics. Watch your toes. You can get a giant water bug hunting them. It's a predatory bug and the largest of its kind. With those huge pincers, it's no wonder it's commonly known as an alligator flea and a toe biter. The bite of this water-dwelling monster is really quite powerful. It grabs its prey with the front legs and then slowly munches on it. And when I say it's a predator, I mean it. Giant water bug's favorite food is fish and amphibians. Despite their name, scorpion flies aren't related to scorpions. They get this moniker thanks to their tails, which look a lot like the notorious arachnids. Seeing a flying scorpion is a daunting sight at best, but fear not, these critters are small and gentle, and they can't even bite you. Only the males have such a tail, and they use it to attract females. Hey! What do you imagine when you hear the words walking stick? Certainly not a bug, but that's exactly what it is. Look at this twig and try to guess. Is there something alive on it or not? Yes and no. This twig is not a twig at all. It is a walking stick. These insects have developed a fascinating camouflage. They're long and unassuming, able to stay still for hours on end, which makes them look like dry twigs. But as soon as you touch one, it scrambles away on its gangly legs. Thanks to their appearance, predatory birds often miss walking sticks in the dense foliage. And their Australian kin give off a pleasant scent, something like peanut butter. Ooh, yum! Covered in brown spiky hair with nine pairs of curly arms, the hag moth caterpillar isn't like any other caterpillar. Its hairy appearance has given it the nickname monkey slug. This strange insect can be found in North America, where it lurks through shady trees and ornamental shrubbery. This hairy little creature isn't as innocent as it may appear. The hairs on its back connect to toxic glands within the caterpillar's skin. If you're curious enough to reach out and touch these hairs, your hand will instantly turn bright red and you'll feel a burning, itching sensation, kind of similar to a bee sting. So don't do that! But if you have been stung by the hag moth caterpillar, you should instantly run the sting underwater to remove any insect hairs that may remain. The sting mark should start to heal and be gone in a week. The bullet ant is the largest of all the ant species. 
Still, despite being the biggest, they grow no larger than the size of a penny. The bullet ant is most likely to be found in countries such as Nicaragua and Paraguay, deep within the rainforests. It might be small, but it has a big bite. The bite of a bullet ant is up to 30 times more painful than the sting of a wasp or a bee. Locals sometimes refer to the small insect as the 24-hour ant, because you'll experience an entire day of discomfort after their bite. Despite the unpleasant feeling, the bite of a bullet ant isn't too dangerous and it should heal within a week. These ants have a particular habit that might make it easy to avoid their powerful bite. Bullet ants release a strong and disgusting stench to drive away predators. So if you ever find yourself trekking through the rainforest and smell an intensely unpleasant odor, hey, I'm sorry. Kissing bugs look similar to your typical cockroach, except slimmer, wingless, and with an interesting line pattern on their back. Even though the name might sound cute, these insects are anything but. The kissing bug can typically be found in the warmer southern states of the U.S., and these pesky little things will hide anywhere, in cracks, under beds, and in furniture. These insects are nicknamed vampire bugs, as they only come out at night. While their bite doesn't feel too painful, it can be incredibly dangerous. It's common for humans to be allergic to the kissing bug saliva, and if that's the case, their bite will cause the skin to be incredibly itchy. These bugs also carry a dangerous parasite that badly affects most humans. If you ever get bitten by a kissing bug, make sure to visit your doctor as soon as possible. The Japanese hornet is the largest species of hornet in the world. The Japanese hornets have a yellow and black striped pattern. Their size and shape make them distinguishable from bees and wasps. The Japanese hornet is much larger and thinner than a bumblebee and much longer than a wasp. These hornets, of course, live in Japan. No, not Toledo, where they travel in colonies of up to 700 members. People who have previously been stung by the Japanese hornet liken it to being struck by a red-hot poker. If you are ever unlucky enough to be stung by one of these insects, immediately call an ambulance, and while you wait for its arrival, wash the sting with cold water. The black widow spider is one of the most notoriously dangerous insects in the animal kingdom. Roughly the size of a paperclip, the hourglass-shaped red markings on the spider's belly make it easy to distinguish. These bugs often travel alone and can be found in warmer regions in dark, dry shelters such as basements or garages. Black widows are considered the most venomous spiders in North America. Their venom is 15 times stronger than a rattlesnake's. Strangely enough, the bite of a black widow doesn't feel particularly painful. It feels more like a pinprick, but it can make you incredibly sick. If you come across a black widow in your basement, don't irritate it, as they only bite when annoyed. If you get bitten, immediately seek emergency care. Healthcare professionals can offer you a black widow anti-venom that reduces the bite symptoms. The yellow jacket is a dangerous species of wasp that can be found all over the world. They're named for their distinctive yellow and black patterns. The yellow is a striking neon color much brighter than a normal wasp. Yellow jackets live in large colonies and build their nests in trees, bushes, and even underground. If you come across a yellow jacket nest, move away slowly and be careful not to threaten or irritate the wasps. The sting of a yellow jacket definitely isn't a pleasant feeling. While most people think that scorpions are related to crabs and other crustaceans, they're actually a form of insect. Scorpions are a type of arachnid, meaning they are closely related to spiders. They tend to be found in warm, dry climates like deserts. Scorpions most often come out at night. They are predatory creatures known to sting on sight. Their sting feels similar to a wasp's, but it can be much more dangerous. Scorpion stings tend to accelerate heart rates and cause difficulty breathing. If a scorpion stings you, immediately wash out the wound. Contact a healthcare professional who can give you a scorpion sting anti-venom treatment. There are just shy of 300 different species of fire ants all across the world. All of the species have the same powerful bite. They're tiny insects who travel in large colonies and have a distinct light brown color, almost red. Fire ants are most commonly found in the United States and are attracted to food. They tend to crash a lot of picnics they're not invited to. Kind of like my nephews. Fire ant bites are incredibly itchy, but not very dangerous. Running the bites under some cold water should help soothe the itchiness, and the bite should go away in a week or so. If you have a more severe reaction than itchiness, make sure to seek urgent care from your doctor. Honeybees are some of our most beloved insects. 
they pollinate our flowers, create honey for us to eat, and generally leave humans alone. Honeybees are social insects who live in large colonies. Surprisingly, a sting from a regular honeybee can be extremely dangerous to some people, especially the elderly. If a honeybee stings you, immediately remove the stinger that will be lodged in your skin. Wash the affected area with soap and water. The sting should heal within a week. If you suffer from more severe conditions, you should immediately contact a healthcare professional. Tarantula hawks are long, thin insects with beautiful rust-colored wings and yellow antenna. They tend to be found in rainforests across Asia, America, and Africa. They tend to live alone and make their homes by burrowing into the ground. If you ever come across a tarantula hawk, be sure to move away very slowly. These insects only attack if they sense a threat. Tarantula hawks are thought to have one of the most painful stings in the world. The pain of the tarantula hawk sting is incredibly intense and lasts for 3 to 4 minutes. After these minutes have passed, the sting won't require any urgent care and should heal on its own. The warrior wasp is a peculiar species. Unlike other wasps, the warrior wasp lacks any yellow stripes and is instead fully jet black. So black, they almost look blue. Ooh, ninja! Some people refer to these insects as drumming wasps. When a stranger approaches, the wasps beat their wings in a synchronized fashion, like drummers in a marching band. Warrior wasps prefer warmer climates and can be found in the tropical rainforests of South America. Out of all the species of wasps, the warrior wasp has the most painful sting. The sting doesn't require any emergency medical help and should heal within a week. The Amazonian giant centipede can be found lurking throughout the tropical climates of South America and the Caribbean. With a distinguishable red color, it is the largest species of centipede in the world and can grow up to a foot long. So that's a foot-long bug with 100 feet. Ironic, isn't it? The giant centipede has a venom dangerous for other insects and smaller animals, but isn't a risk to humans. Despite that, their bite is still unpleasant and causes a burning sensation. If you get bitten by one of these critters, the symptoms can last anywhere from a few hours to a few days. If you have a more serious reaction, you know what to do. Go see the doc. Ah, the beauty of nature all around you, the fresh air, and days and days of meditative rest far away from civilization ahead of you. But you've been walking for quite some time to get this far, and now it's time to set up camp. The woods around are dense, and there's no suitable place to put up your tent. Then you notice a nice green patch completely devoid of trees and only sprinkled with some low-growing bushes. Well, you go there, smug about your find, and get to work on the tent. The ground is unusually soft and smooth, but that doesn't bother you too much. All the better! The pegs go into the soil like a knife into butter. By the time you're done, it's dark already, so you get inside the tent and crawl into your cozy sleeping bag. You wake up from a creepy feeling that something's not right. You feel wet? You start wriggling inside your bag and, yes, it's almost completely soaked from below. You rush out of the tent as quickly as you can and see that it started to sink into the ground. Turns out you've set up camp on a swamp. And you've been lucky, too. Swamps aren't always obvious. Sometimes you won't even see them until you're knee-deep in muck and trouble. Getting out of there can be tricky as well. The moss and roots create a soft padding that's slowly pulling you under. And when you try to raise your feet, you might end up without your boots. Telling a forest swamp is fairly easy when you know what to look for. If you're in a dense thicket and see a lush, sunlit glade where nothing but moss and an occasional bush grows, chances are high it's a swamp. You can also check it by stepping lightly on this serene ground. If it feels springy, better stay away. One other thing the swamp can be dangerous for is, surprisingly, a forest fire. If you stay too close to a swamp and start a campfire, it might catch on, especially if there's a strong wind. Swamps and marshes are chock full of tar hidden underneath the layers of water and moss. When it starts to burn, extinguishing it is nearly impossible. Always keep a safe distance from any swamp before starting a campfire. Another common mistake while breaking camp in the wild is not looking up. 
Let's say you found some solid ground to put up the tent, cleared it from all the nasty cones and stones, and made sure there aren't any anthills close by. You don't want anything to creep inside your sleeping bag at night, do you? The spot you've chosen is perfect, and the tree your tent is leaning to protects you from the wind and rain. You set up for the night, turning off your camping light, and suddenly, your tent is thrashing as if a wild beast has attacked you. Bewildered, you scrambled out and see a huge branch has fallen on top of your tent. The worst thing about this is that you would have seen it coming if only you'd looked up before setting up camp. Half-broken and rotten branches are easy to spot, and it's never a good idea to put your tent straight beneath them. Such a thing can break off at any moment, and you'll be lucky if it doesn't tear your tent and harm you. You know, crunch. Dozens of tourists make this mistake every year and often pay dearly for it. Looking up will also help you make sure there are no wasp nests or spider nets above you. These might prove even worse than a branch because wasps don't like to be disturbed and spiders may turn out to be venomous. Now, if you see a beautiful river and decide to break camp on its banks, pay special attention to where exactly you put up your tent as well. If you stay too close to the water, especially in spring or fall, chances are you'll find yourself afloat in the middle of the night. Always check the weather forecast for the day and the night after. If there's a chance of rain, better stay away from any bodies of water, especially rivers. The rain might raise the water level in it and make it burst its banks, drowning your little camp and ruining your vacation. But even if you're far from water, rain could spoil it for you. Say you're once again deep in the forest and tree crowns are protecting you from the weather. Precipitation still gets to the forest floor, but at least it's not as bad as in the open. The next night, when you set up camp in another place, you feel the ground is soft and springy. It's not a swamp, though, just the last night's rain has loosened the soil. If you're in such a spot, better move to somewhere solid. The thing is, soft and loose ground might start creeping out from under you at any point. This movement isn't as dangerous as when you're in a swamp, but the pegs of your tent might come loose too, and you'll end up buried underneath a pile of rugs that used to be your tent. And if you decided to set up your camp in a cozy-looking valley, and the rain starts falling when you're already there, well, prepare for a nice floating trip. All the water will naturally go down and into your shelter, eventually finding its way under your tent. No wonder you'll find yourself knee-deep in rainwater when you wake up. Oh, what a great spot for taking a bit of rest after a long walk. It's on a hilltop, so there's no water nearby, the sun's shining, and not a single tree to block it out. Sunbathing here's got to be fabulous. Well, it seems this way for the first few hours. But when you stay here long enough, you'll see the error of your decision. Direct sunlight on your tent can make it hot in a matter of hours due to the materials it's made of. And you'll feel it on your skin as soon as you crawl inside. Let's just say you won't want to stay in there for long until it's night and the tent's cooled down at least. Same thing with the wind. In an open spot, gusts can reach crazy speeds. And if you haven't been careful while hammering down the pegs, you might say goodbye to your tent sooner than you'd like. It's best to find a spot near a tree that would protect you both from the sun and the wind. Still, don't get tempted to camp near a lone tree when the weather forecast isn't in your favor. Both sunny and rainy weather are okay, but if there's a serious storm coming, a single standing tree will serve as a lightning rod. It's not hard to imagine what may come if lightning strikes a tree you're camping under. Hey, you might get a charge out of it! When winter camping, the weather can be even more treacherous. Remember what I said about direct sunlight? Forget it. In winter, it's best to have the sun shining on your tent. The cold might get to you no matter how cool and expensive your tent is, and the winds are generally much more vicious in the cold season. Direct sunlight will help you cope with much of the cold. One of the more common mistakes hikers make is starting a campfire too close to the tent. Again, the material of the tent conducts heat very well, and it's a good thing when it's warm. But it also catches on fire easily. Sometimes, one spark is enough to burn your shelter to cinders. 
make sure there's enough room between your tent and the campfire, and never leave your fire unsupervised. When you go to sleep, it's a rule to extinguish the fire so that you don't wake up to a blazing inferno around you. Insects can ruin even the most exciting hike. Mosquitoes, ants, ticks, and other pesky bugs can find their way into your tent wherever you are, so make sure you protect yourself from them. Use skin repellents when you go outside and put an anti-insect spiral next to the entrance to your tent. Don't put it too close or inside, though. The smell is irritating, and it can also cause a fire. To avoid the best part of mosquitoes, and especially ticks, try to stay away from lakes, ponds, and dense forests where swamps may occur. Skeeters reproduce in still water, so areas around such pools are replete with the winged pests. But they have a hard time flying when there's some wind, so choosing an open spot is your best bet to get rid of them. Don't let them bug you!